to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in! Oh, yeah! Little fueled. extra energy. Yeah, he's fueled by the, the moustache. <laughs> the beard was the slowing show. you down, man. It's extra, well, it's extra weight. You know, it's like a swimmer, how they get that fraction of a second. Andy gets a fraction of energy when he loses yeah, his I beard. F- I, feel, I feel a little bit smarter. I feel a little bit sharper. <laughs> I feel a little bit more dangerous. I feel a little bit more creepy. Yeah, I would focus on the last one. <laughs> I have uh, I've told my children that they can no longer watch uh, spitballers oh, no. or the footballers uh, because they will fear you. Well, you, yeah, the reaction from your household in particular has been the most uh, creepy focused. Your yeah. your wife, Jason, has uh, texted many times with my wife to let her know how bad it looks. Yes. So I know that not everybody has received this mustache the Why? way I've received it I, with I will joy. S- I will say this. Uh, Andy, Why would you go out of the it's way? It's a great <laughs> mustache. Like, you are truly rocking a mustache. Well, I, I will give a shout out to the Foot Clan that backed me into this corner I wanted to be in uh, by supporting uh, a charity I put out there on Twitter That was helping in uh, some local communities due to the pandemic. It's kind of the whole thing I think we should all be doing now, which is kind of people always want to know, how do you help? And I'm always like, hey, look to your left and to your right. Look at your local community, the people around you, how you can help them. And so they came out in droves and uh, donated a bunch of money. And now I have a mustache for at least a month. Oh, a month. I mean, at least a month. A month. I think it's going to grow a month. Yes, exactly. We have a jam-packed, incredible episode of the Fantasy Footballers for you today. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The NFL draft is like 10 days away from now. That Uh, makes no sense. We had a company meeting this morning, and we were talking about the draft because we're planning some stuff, which we will uh, reveal that when the time is right. But I could not fathom that the draft is next week. Like I'm, If you ask me what date... (laughs) <laughs> it is. I, I would say it's March 25th. I agree. <laughs> like that's, where, that's where my body calendar is. I saw a news station is helping out with a new segment each day called What Day Is It? <laughs> yes, perfect. And March, all they do is tell you what day it is. <laughs> March 92nd is today. <laughs> I know. It's a weird time, but we have a second wide receiver rankings episode for you today. Some news that took place in the fantasy football world, in the NFL world that we're going to discuss as well. So it's going to be jam-packed. Very excited to be with you. Appreciate everybody that supports the show. Reviews over on Apple Podcasts, listening on Spotify, Google Podcasts, ad-free on Stitcher Premium, YouTube, wherever you're listening. Jason, your new incredible segment debuted on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers. To great applause. It is it's wonderful. Fantastic. It is wonderful. It is five minutes of pure hilarity, and I am so thrilled to have someone as a proxy to eat things I don't want to eat and let me know how they taste. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm the guinea pig. I'm the taste tester. I feel like if, you, if, if we were still in royal times, I would be the one that dies from the poison. You I would, would be, be the, the one that eats the poison and is fine anyways. Yeah, and, and then, then the, the king, king dies. dies. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm king now. <laughs> yeah, you would Wait, be. The poison person gets to be the king? At, if they That's live through the poison, works. absolutely. That's survival of the fittest. That, that <laughs> The people would raise him up as the strongest. Oh, that tasted delicious. Now, have you recorded episode two or is that... that's? I am recording episode two. Hopefully tomorrow it will be as disgusting, if not more so, than the first. Um, so we'll, we'll see. But yeah, you can uh, subscribe on YouTube and check out Jason Eats. Yes, absolutely. You need to do that. You will smile. I promise you. The Texans have traded for wide receiver Brandon Cooks. That was the big news over the last few days. They got Brandon Cooks and a 2022 fourth-round pick 
and the Rams get a second round pick. Now, this was not the pick picked up by the Cardinals, right? This was their pick, a little bit further down in the second round. So in the past couple of weeks, they've turned DeAndre Hopkins into Brandon Cooks and David Johnson. And a slightly upgraded second round because there's been fourth rounders going kind of all over the place. Um, so, you know, you, you could say what you want about the deal um, as, a, as a total, whether or not it's worth it or not, you know, to trade a superstar for two former really good players. Um, but, you know, the question for fantasy is what does this do for Brandon Cooks? What does this do for Deshaun Watson? Yeah, let's start there, and then we'll do a buy-sell with the Rams side of this equation. But Brandon Cooks, it, this is his fourth franchise. And we didn't see – I mean, anybody who had him in fantasy last year was disappointed. Cooks dealt with concussion issues, didn't seem to be a part of the offense when he was on the field. The offense itself had struggled. But Brandon Cooks has managed to do mysterious things yes. in the NFL, be seemingly consistently – unliked by the team that he's on while producing thousand yard seasons regularly. So, you know, I can't step back and look at this deal and appropriate the previous value of Brandon cooks onto the Texans too much risk for me. There was a time when I was defending Brandon cooks because of the production levels, but at this point, I am concerned that you're only the Texans, one year away, though. One year removed from him being a 1,200 yard receiver. Correct, but it's the I mean, it's the NFL. One year can be a long time for, That's fair. for what what you see of a player on the field. I am just concerned the Texans have three wide receiver twos and no ones, and the ball is going to get distributed all over the place. Where are you guys with Brandon Cooks, and where will he be drafted? Will people? anoint him as the clear unadulterated fantasy number one for that team over Will Fuller over stills obviously yeah I mean I, I I think his history as a fantasy wide receiver one um will anoint him I you know Will Fuller has a long history of never you know finishing a season and playing uh a full game whereas Brandon Cooks has been you know a top wide receiver many many times the issue here is actually, ironically, injury for Brandon Cooks. If you look at last season, through those first uh, five games, he was on pace for over 1,000 yards again. And then what happened is he ended up, a couple games later, getting a concussion, you know, again, had, you know, some injury issues. When he got back out on the field, and if you look at his snap percentages for the Rams over the last, you know, two years, he was always up in the 90s. 97%, 98, 96. He's just on the field every play. When he got back from injury over the last part of the year, he was on the field 38%, 72%, 59%, 60%. They just said they're basically moving on from him as an every down player. Now, whether that was worry about health. Yeah, but and, why do that? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Why, it, why it would a, you do that? It was a change in offensive philosophy. They were using two tight end sets. You could look at uh, those was that the final five games, Jay? The final five games, uh, snap percentages. Yeah, yes. Because you look at Cooper Cup and this the exact same thing. You have Cooper Cup, who was a ninety percent snap player, and then those final five games, like uh, AKA the the Tyler Higby explosion. That's when the offense completely changed, and and even Cooper Cup wasn't being used all the time for Brandon. Looking at specifically Brandon Cooks. We're doing our wide receiver two shows. You'll notice that he is not on this show in the rankings, but I have him, you know, at wide receiver twenty two. Now, granted, these are not our full projection rankings where we crank those out once the NFL draft has happened. So this is kind of like a these rankings are confident a, a bit of confidence looking at I would rather have this guy over this guy. And I it's hard for me to not see Brandon Cooks turning into a top twenty four wide receiver. If you want to say the risk of his of of the concussions of the injury situation, that's fine. But I believe they they traded a second round pick because they felt like the uh, uh, they felt like their wide receiver. Obviously, they traded away Hopkins, but they felt like Brandon Cooks could fill most of that production. So he will be their de facto number one wide receiver, and I think Brandon Cooks is still has something to offer and. I can't not I can't see him not being a thousand yard wide receiver with Deshaun Watson as his quarterback. Yeah, if he plays sixteen games, you're probably right. 
If you look at wide receivers since 2015, he's the wide receiver 10 in that span. Basically the same output as Devontae Adams in that span. Obviously Cooks with the bad, you know, 60 number 62 finish this past year, but his track record is good. It just hasn't been with the same team. And anytime that, you that's move, the weirdest move part, teams, man, is, it's tough. Wide thousand yard wide receivers don't just get traded around the NFL teams. Teams seem very, very willing to trade Brandon Cooks away, and to, to the point I, no where one knows he is, why he is the second most traded player in NFL history. And what was that? He's was still behind young. Dickerson. Yeah. Is that what I had read? Yes, Eric Dickerson's the only player with more. Uh, wow, career trades. All but right, just just wait. <laughs> yeah, well, there's still coming. plenty of time. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, we're going to buy sell the Rams side of this transaction. After the Brandon Cooks trade, buy sell both Cooper Cup and Robert Woods as top 20 fantasy wide receivers in 2020. This trade is in many ways a gift to fantasy owners in terms of projecting and predicting the output on the Rams side of uh, the equation. So, I have, I'm buying. I think Cooper Cup and Robert Woods are both top 20 fantasy wide receivers heading into the new year. I have no idea how the tight end situation is actually going to break down in terms of production for Higby or Everett and what they get out of the backfield. But the one thing I know is that Cooper Cup and Robert Woods are two of the more talented wide receivers in football and a good offense. It's, it, I have them ranked that way. I have Cup 19, Robert Woods at 20. Uh, but like I said, those Cooper Cup snap percentages at the end of the year where he was a 90% guy, but then it was 72, 28, 92, 61, 61. Like it, it's seemingly all over the place, and these are in wins and losses too. This is not – you feel like you can figure out what was going on, except we know that Tyler Higby went from a 54% player to a 91% snap share player over those final five games. And I believe that the trading of Brandon Cooks kind of solidifies in that this is going to be their plan. They're they're no longer the the three wide receiver spread it out. 90 plus percent of snaps, we're always going to have three wide receivers on the field. We're going to go more to this set. Their running game was was better once they when they were moving to the two tight end sets. It, the offense just clicked better. So I believe it's uh, – even though I have these guys at 19-20, I would, I would say the odds are uh, l much lower that both of them end the year, at, at both in the top 20. So, you know, my, my rankings would sell this because right now I've got Robert Woods uh, at wide receiver 22, which, of course, I hate because I love Robert Woods and he's great. Um is it's sometimes it's not a matter of the player himself, but all the other players out there, some guys that I think are going to have a big year. You know, if you're projecting uh, good things for Cortland Sutton, that moves, you know, everybody behind him down a spot. But the rea you know, speaking to what you're talking about, Mike, you look at the, the last five games of the year when that major change happened for the Rams, Robert Woods was on the field all the time, you know, 99% yeah. of steps. Yes. He, he was basically the one. And then Cooper Cup, and Brandon Cooks were splitting that spot when it came time for, you know, too wide. And I think this is great news for Cooper Cup. And I hate my current ranking. I've got him at 20, which we'll get at. And I, Cooper Cup could easily be, you know, a top 10 wide receiver with his prowess in the red zone. Um, I am a huge Cooper Cup fan and believer. So, you know, I can't wait I'm to stat these guys out and actually see how I, I, I think that the entire NFL's uh, projections lay and, and find where they lay. Right now, I've got to sell it based on my my rankings. I'm sure we're going to talk about it exhaustively uh, throughout the summer, but I'm I'm having the hardest time taking that little five game stretch and appropriating it towards the future for the Rams. I mean, they three and two in that span. They did what they had to do, but it's hard for me to take that five games. You know, Cooper Cup was a 90 plus yard receiver. Robert Woods was a 90 plus or sorry, 90 plus reception guy both both players over 90 receptions uh i saw so going full tight end direction i i'm just i'm not sold that that five games is going to be a projectable trend for all of 2020 i, I think they, my they point traded is a even, guy away 
but even if it is, these two wide receivers will be excellent. I think they're, you know, this says that to me, this, this is indicative that they do want to do that, but they've got the tools to do it with, with Woods and Cup. They, they should both eat. All right. Any, any thoughts about uh, what Josh Reynolds? Super None. Star? Okay. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. Remember, pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. They sell, uh, they have hundreds of daily sports auctions, uh, sports memorabilia auctions. Get some sweet autograph gear from a bunch of different places and use that code BALLERS to get a $10 credit when you sign up for free at pristineauction.com. Some news right before we jump back into the early wide receiver rankings. I don't want to linger too long on the news because I want to get through as many wide receivers as we can today. But there was a, a couple of bits worth mentioning. Uh, first, Christian McCaffrey signs a four-year contract extension through 2024. That is a $16 million per year cap hit. Highest paid running back in NFL history. I don't think any of us doubt that he's deserving of that kind of money, but are we going to see four years worth of this production level at hey, running back? Probably not. You don't see it from any great second contract for uh, running backs. And and they're obviously the guys getting the best contracts are the best players out there. Didn't happen for Gurley. Didn't happen for David Johnson, uh, Devonta Freeman. They get their big contracts, and, and that means that about halfway through, they'll, they'll probably end. But what is great about this is there's a lot of question. You know, Ja Rule coming in as, as head coach. Is he <laughs> going to... Um, still utilize him as the true workhorse or is he going to start putting in more you know when you pay a guy the most in NFL history that guy gets the ball the most I mean well I don't think any of us are what, what's interesting when you pay a guy is that you face a value proposition two years into the the deal of yes he like Gurley I mean we said this might be a situation where Gurley is better off and the Rams are better off but that's all because of financial I mean if Gurley was affordable the Rams probably hold on to Gurley for this year right and get some yeah. production out of him the the Falcons signed him immediately so that's where it gets interesting is can he produce at a value of 16 million dollars a couple years into the deal we'll see he's a special player no doubt about it but it's always the very special players getting these kind of monster deals and they just don't last very often yeah it, yeah <laughs> the, the odds are against him but I, the odds have probably been against him forever. But, I mean, back at Stanford when he was just an absolute workhorse stud and he's done the exact same thing in the NFL, every once in a while you just get a guy and his – something about the DNA and his body, it just it just holds up in, to the NFL grind. I mean, like Emmett Smith, his body just held up more than other guys do. So ho hopefully that's the guy because they paid him to be that guy. Did uh does this contract do anything in a redraft league for you? Does it make any difference whatsoever in the way that you view McCaffrey this year? I mean, we all I have think him it, at number it one. It solidifies him at number yeah, one. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I'd take him at one before the contract, but this just gives me more confidence. Now you take him at zero. <laughs> yes. I start the draft with Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> that's a that's a good plan. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Foot all right. plan, highly recommend. Uh DeAndre Hopkins has officially passed his physical. Oh, but he wasn't the one we're worried about, right? Like, no, he's not. David no, he's not. <laughs> David Johnson hasn't passed his physical yet. But we're closer to an actual yes. transaction. Gurley's contract's official. And then the Chiefs did sign DeAndre Washington they to a one-year deal, formerly of the Raiders. He is a depth piece. This is a move that, to me, once again, we're in the same old boat <laughs> with Damian Williams so far yep. where you're looking at it like, okay, Washington's going to compete with you know the people behind Damian Williams, the running backs behind Damian Williams. Not what, for the starting job. What's exciting to me about that is with not, Darwin has nothing to do with the Chiefs. It's actually on the Raiders' side. You you forget DeAndre Washington had 36 receptions last year, and you know there's all this talk about getting Josh Jacobs more involved. But then they re-sign the their main pass catching back Jalen Rashard. Well, look, you know if Washington's 30 plus receptions were to just migrate over to Josh Jacobs and Jalen Rashard stays every bit as involved in the passing right. game then Josh Jacobs is probably a top six back. Yeah, yeah. It'll be very interesting having to ride the Damian Williams hype train all the way into the It's very exciting. Season. All right, before we get into the rest of the wide receiver rankings, very excited to discuss those players. I want to thank 
today's sponsor. We're talking about Simply Safe Home Security. With all the uncertainty going on in this world, feeling safe at home has never been more important, which is why I want to talk to you about Simply Safe Home Security. Uh, longtime friends of the show, for very good reason, we've got them at our studio. And I can tell you, we have been fortunate. We have not had somebody break in and try to steal anything. We have, however, uh, put a picture up on the wall that has fallen down and shattered gl- <laughs> shattered glass everywhere. In and the I middle can of the promise night? you that the glass break sensor worked from Simply Safe and notified <laughs> us right away when we uh, when I didn't give Al the opportunity to hang it on the wall. I did it myself, and that's why it fell. But Simply Safe has made it easy to get uh, comprehensive protection for your home. And the cool thing here, you know, look at the times we're in. No technician or salesperson that needs to come and disrupt your house or be a part of this. You don't need to pay any outrageous monthly fees or sign a two-year deal. You just order it online and then you get the product sent to you. You can set it up and uh, they're the best. We've been with them forever. So head to simplysafe.com slash footballers, get free shipping and a 60-day money-back guarantee. That is simplysafe.com slash footballers to make sure uh, and make sure that they know that our show sent you from Simply Safe and all of us here. We wish you a very safe uh season of life and good health. And we want to thank Omaha steaks for being so awesome, supporting our show forever and making supporting, supporting our stomachs the best way <laughs> that can be supported by giving us the world's best steaks and a huge variety of family favorites, you know, without leaving all home. the Franks, give me the Franks. Everyone is, you know, at home right now. You're spending so much time at home. There's articles coming out about, Oh, you got to stock up on meat. Well, good news foot clan. Because <laughs> Omaha is the best way to do it. And because you're listening to this podcast, you're going to get massive discounts using our codes. Uh, right now, Omaha Steaks, their limited time stock up sale, it's av- available for everyone to help you and your family stock up on the food you love. You go to omahasteaks.com, enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar, and you unlock savings unique for our listeners. There's a variety of ready-to-ship boxes available now. You just put that footballer's code in the search bar. You could save more than 50% on your order and get free shipping on orders of $69 or more. These packages are perfect for families. They're ready to head straight to your door with free shipping. So go to Omaha Steaks. Dot com type footballers in the search bar you can even get these for your family like uh you know support support the ones you love with omaha steaks wide receivers i assume you'd recommend sending directly to those friends and family as opposed to letting it arrive at your house and you if it arrives at your house it will not that's my make point. it right. to their place it's just not going to get there <laughs> yeah i think that would be the common sense approach yeah. Or alternatively, you can send it to my house with, <laughs> and let me know their address. You'll and, appropriate uh, it. Yeah, I'm sure I'll take care of it. All right. The top 10 from our last episode, Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, DeAndre Hopkins, Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay, Mike Evans, Amari Cooper, and DJ Moore rounding out Yoo-hoo! the top 10. Number 11, Odell Beckham Jr. 11 on my ranks, 11 on Jason's, and 14 on Mike's <sighs> early season rankings. Odell Beckham Jr., we are years removed from that wide receiver six, wide receiver five, wide receiver four finish 2014 through 2016. Last three years, four games played, finished wide receiver 83, 12 games played, wide receiver 16, and then last year played the whole season. Was he banged up? How banged up was he? Finished at wide receiver 26 on the Browns. So here we are staring down the great potential. What we know of Odell Beckham Jr., but the circumstances he's in on the Browns last year was a a huge disappointment, 74 catches. I feel like we talked about him a lot, but where are you with Odell right now? I mean, it's a surprising thing to not have him in the top 10 at the wide receiver position. He's he's the hardest player. You know, we talk a lot about the the difference between linear ranking and statting guys out, right? After the NFL draft, we'll stat out every single player in the NFL. The, he's, he's the biggest mover to me because I have a hard time with him this low. In fact, I, I moved him today up to 10. Um, over over my my number eleven player because I just I thought if I'm going to draft I'm going to take Odell. It's my confidence in who he is and his talent. But the reality is he played 16 games last year. Sure, there was an excuse. Maybe he wasn't a hundred percent. But that's that's part of who Odell is. You know his his injury history. And so uh, you know 
Okay, it was a new team, but how many excuses are you going to make? He was there. He had the most targets. He he played 16 games, and he was the wide receiver 26. But his name is so big that it's and his talent is so great that it's really difficult to have him outside of that top 10 at wide receiver because when you start talking about the guys we're talking about today, you have to say, well, what is their chance of finishing as like the the wide receiver one? And pretty much most of them are none. But Odell could do it. He, you know, he he could he could explode, be healthy, and the excuses come off, and Baker takes a step forward, and all of a sudden he's a monster. So that's why why right now I've you know I've got him at number ten. Yeah, it was the lowest catch percentage of his career. Yards dropped from eighty eight yards a game down to sixty five, and a, a number that I thought was uh, quite gross. You know, we're looking at real scoring opportunity, those targets inside the ten. You had uh, Odell Beckham. He had five of them. Here are his uh, his teammates. Demetrius Harris had four. Ricky Seals-Jones had four. Damian Ratley had four <laughs> targets inside the 10. He what was mad. Happening? He was mad about it, too, constantly. And, it was, I mean, Jarvis had 11. With, like, 11. That's the number I expect for, for Odell Beckham. And, honestly, my, my analysis right now of Odell Beckham is, like, it's a whelp. It's a whelp emoji. Like, I, I, what happened? I I don't know. I don't know what happened because I still believe that Odell Beckham is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. But it's – and I was, I, I was diving into everything, like on, on Baker Mayfield. I'm looking at, okay, how much time in, in, the, in the pocket did, would, did Baker have? Was How accurate was Baker when he was getting the ball out? in two and a half seconds, or if he was holding on to the ball. I was looking at all of these things, and there just was there was nothing I could find to point me in a direction for the lack of production that we expected from Beckham. He, he still had 74 and 1,000 yards, but that's not what you were expecting. Well, and they're disappearing from right. week to week. I mean, he had four games in the you know where he was outside the top 12, but in that top 24, two games inside the top 12, and then it was like, you would have been better off starting Ratley. I mean, you just would have been in a better situation. <laughs> right. It, it was so, you know, polar extremes. I, I think that's what was so shocking is there were games when he would, you'd see them try to force him the ball to start the game. It'd be an end around or a screen, and then he'd be gone. And great players just don't disappear like that. Do they? Yeah. No, they, they, they don't. don't. And, and here's the problem: is it? Did you say poop great- or coop? Coop. I, I said coop. Okay, because coop is yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but here's here's the issue: is great players don't just disappear. And there's another great player on this team in Jarvis Landry who has not finished outside the top 20 at wide receiver in the last five years. His finishes are 10, 15, 8, 19, and 13 last year on on the same team with the same Baker with the same getting it out early or holding on to the ball late. So you know, last year I was constantly making the joke that Odell Beckham is the wide receiver two for the Browns and Jarvis is the wide receiver one. It, it, it was a fact in fantasy by the end of the year. Um, you know, and, and when I look at the linear rankings, that's why I'm saying I, I can't wait to stat these guys out. Cause when I look at linear rankings, I can't get myself to put Jarvis Landry up in this range and I can't get myself to put Odell Beckham down. But at the same time, <laughs> that, that seems statistically foolish. Yeah, I mean, I think what you said is is the main point with Beckham is there are only a handful of players that you won't be surprised if they somehow finished in the top three, and Beckham's one of those guys that you could he could do it. I mean, you wouldn't be shocked. No, no, you'd yeah, say I mean, people would say, "See, it's yeah. Odell Beckham Jr." But that can be so de- deceiving for fantasy owners. And yeah, now you, you have Austin Hooper coming into the equation too. Yeah, which you maybe don't want to buy maybe into that the hurts name. Landry more, but yeah, you don't want to just get sold the name. T.Y. Hilton comes in at number 12. Oof, we are we are hot and bothered for T.Y. I, I feel like I have somehow betrayed him suddenly. <laughs> I have... we w- The three of us are so much higher on T.Y. Hilton than the industry because I had him up at 16 and I thought I was going to get bias accusations because of the fact he's like one of my favorite players. He's on my dynasty team. And you guys have him at eleven and twelve. You have him in the top twelve, and I am, I am tickled. I am enjoying that <laughs> very, very much. 
So tell me why you are so bullish, even more bullish than I am. I mean, it, it, it's a simple case, right? You have a very talented wide receiver who we bodied last year and, and parts of the year before because of quarterback play. And that is what his issue was. He didn't have a quarterback that I felt could get him the ball with regularity, with consistency, but you still saw the flashes of his brilliance on the field. And so Philip Rivers coming over, uh, yeah, is, is Philip going to throw some interceptions? You're darn right he is. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same That's time, my promise to he, you. <laughs> he can hyper target his wide receiver one. He made Keenan Allen, you know, a fantasy superstar for several years. And, and there's not another great option here. You've got, you know, okay, he's going to dump it off to the running backs and Jack Doyle's good. Maybe Paris Campbell will step up. But to me, there is such an enormous gap between all those players and T.Y. Hilton, that T.Y. Hilton will have an enormous market share from a competent quarterback with a really good offensive line and a smart head coach that's an offensive, uh, you know, designer extraordinaire. So there's a lot to love here in T.Y. Hilton. He's not over any kind of age gap or or issue where I think, oh, he's, you know, he's 33 years old and he's going to lose it. So uh, to me, he's going to be a value in the draft. I was going to say, Mike, does that position Hilton is one of our very early Wide receiver values? Yeah, 100%. And to me, this is last year for T.Y. Hilton, you you have to crumple that thing up and throw it in the garbage, man. Uh, quarterback play that, that massive injuries wasn't enough. Massive injuries. It just, just men in black flash this thing away from your memory. T.Y. Hilton is still a good player. And it's, I, I have the same arguments as Jason. It comes down to Phillip Rivers and. Philip Rivers, very accurate quarterback. Philip Rivers also willing to go down the field. He went down the field 4% more than Jacoby Brissett, and his adjusted completion percentage down the field is about six, uh, six percentage points higher than Jacoby. Like, Rivers can still get it done despite Jason's laments of fantasy crushing him last year. Philip Rivers, I think, still has enough, and T.Y. Hilton – will be the biggest benefactor of the wide receiver core for, for the Colts. Just to give you perspective on our rank compared to the consensus right now, the ADP for T.Y. Hilton is the 21st wide receiver off the board. Debo Samuel, Calvin Ridley, uh, DJ Chark, Stephon Diggs. These are all players going ahead. Debo? Uh, Debo, yes. Oh, people are hot and bothered for Debo for sure. But yeah, I mean, oh, you're, yeah. you're naming a bunch of people that you're not sure if they're the one other than Diggs Correct. on their team. Correct. T.Y. Hilton is the clear number one. All right, Allen Robinson comes in at 13 on our early consensus wide receiver rankings. Jason. Allen Robinson. 19, Jason? 19. And I've got him mind. at 10. Mike has him at 11. Jason, Jason has him at 19. Last year, he finished at wide receiver 11. And this is, uh, in many ways, a similar argument to the Hilton argument. He is the bona fide, certifiable Target monster once again for these Bears. And last year, 98 receptions, 1,147 yards, seven touchdowns on 154 targets. And I don't really see that part of the offense changing. So Nick Foles, he may be the quarterback. More power to him. Allen Robinson, to me, is a top 10 wide receiver. Again, we've highlighted it. Linear rankings are tough. I mean, you're having to make a decision between multiple players. They're that not are in, 19 tough in the same tier. But uh, Jason, Mike has taken issue with your ranking. Uh, he's shaking his head at you. He is. I think he's grimacing a little bit. I I, saw, I, I can barely contain myself right now. You're gonna you're gonna throw Allen Robinson almost out of the top 20. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think Allen Robinson's great. It's no secret. I think the quarterback play there is is terrible. Obviously, he had the quarterback play last year and finished well. But remember, there were so many games where the Bears wide receiver core, the tight ends were uh, demolished. Taylor Gabriel was gone. And, and in those games, Allen Robinson stepped up and just had a monster number of targets. Is Taylor Gabriel gone? Yeah, Taylor Gabriel's gone, but yes, Ridley is, is. Ridley's coming into year two. We'll see what they do in the draft. Um, Trey Burton is healthy. So, yeah. I, <laughs> Wait, did you just make a Trey Burton argument? Yeah, well, look, they had no <laughs> tight ends, and they want to pass the ball to tight ends. Look, you just brought up the people who got red zone targets 
right? In in you know for the Browns, those people still get targets that take it away from Allen Robinson. I think what you saw last year was peak Allen Robinson at eleven because he was exactly what you hoped for, one hundred and fifty four targets. If that comes down. You know, and, uh, you know, and then midway through the season, there's quarterback controversy and Nick Foles comes in. Does he do the same targeting? I think there's risk here. And so to me, I think Allen Robinson's a great talent. I don't love the offense and I think his targets were inflated last year. So that's why I've got him at, at 19. Mike, are you comfortable with Allen Robinson as your wide receiver one if you went running back early? Yes. Yeah. Assuming that I made those decisions earlier. Yeah, I would. I mean, I, I don't think Allen Robinson has top five because of the quarterback play, but I think he will make it into the wide receiver one category because he is a great wide receiver. Last year, the third highest target share for all wide receivers. I don't think that's going away. 13 of the 16 games, he had five or more receptions, so he was giving you a safe PPR baseline with the opportunity to explode. I'm assuming, this is, and this is just me, I'm assuming that Nick Foles will be the quarterback for the Chicago Bears. I and I also believe that's an upgrade over Trubisky. I'm not going to say it's a leaps and bounds better, but we have seen Nick Foles have electric seasons. So, maybe look, if a Nick Foles electric season hits on and Allen Robinson is still the number 1, then I guess top 5 is in the realm of possibilities, but he, he feels just like a safe. He is he feel, he feels very receiver. very safe to be a top 12 guy to me. Yeah, this isn't an anti Allen Robinson take. I'd be yes, super it is, happy. Jason. I would be super happy to have him as my wide receiver two on a team. I don't. I don't want him as a wide receiver one. I just don't think the offense is going to be prolific enough to uh, make him stand out. You know, you've got Anthony Miller. They paid a lot of money to Jimmy Graham as well. I know that we scoff at that, but they obviously don't. They want him involved, and they think is an important part. So of did the this Packers. Offense. And I scoffed well, then. Yeah. Well, and he got a lot of targets. So, you know, he shouldn't have. But right. it happened. Juju Smith Schuster comes in at 14. <sighs> yeah. With, uh, <laughs> you know, a cloud, a cloud over Juju and this <sighs> offense right now. We all have him about the same spot. It was, <sighs> it was not good. I do not feel as though, uh, you know, we've discussed this quite a bit. I can hear the grimaces. You can hear the uh, deep sighs. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to get a great year out of Juju last year without Antonio Brown. That van that viewpoint, that opinion, did not have an opportunity to be validated due to the quarterback play, or at least I don't think it did. You're, I'm it welcome. Did not. Okay. Just in case you wanted to give it to me, I was just going to take no, it. But, no, no, but no, it did. No, between no, 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 no. between no, the quarterback no, no, no. play and uh, you know the struggles that we saw, his injuries. That being said, we still haven't seen Juju Smith-Schuster go put up a monster season without Antonio Brown. That fact remains. We haven't seen it. He's young. Last year, only played twelve games. Wasn't pretty. I'm not willing to give him the complete, you know, throw the whole season away, but pretty close to it for an opportunity at that age when he had 166 targets in 2018, finished as the wide receiver nine. I feel so comfortable with him at 14. That feels like the right number for Juju. Yeah, it it does. I mean, I've got him at 13. I, I hate it because I think he's got the talent to be, you know, certainly a top 10 wide receiver in the league. But while, while I agree with you, Andy, you throw last season away. I mean, you, you lose Big Ben and the backups weren't, serviceable the backups were horrific they you know they went to the backup of the backup uh, because the backup was that bad and then they went to the backup but then and then they had to go back to the backup to the backup yeah it was it was a it was a mess situation that you throw out but here's the parts of it that you can't you know you've got the strainer on the bathtub that's not letting everything go away you drain most of it out but left in that strainer is a, an old rubber ducky injured big ben with still no backup quarterback behind him, and that's risk that has to be factored in because here's what I'm confident in. If Big Ben goes down, Juju sucks because that's <laughs> what happened. <laughs> so, that is a fact, my friend. Yeah, so I, I look, I, if Big Ben's <laughs> out there, he's slinging the ball, I think Juju's going to be a great 
wide receiver. I if you get him around wide receiver fourteen where we've got him ranked, I think you're going to be super happy. But there there's risk there. I was a believer last year, Andy. You weren't. I was a believer he could do it without Antonio Brown, um, and that he would. You know his talent on the field. I, I don't think any of the three of us have ever watched him and felt like he wasn't a, a great player. Well, I mean, I. I think about comparing him to how we look at A.J. Brown this last year. And you just watch him on the field and you say he's a man among boys and he, he's he's dominant out there. That's how I saw Juju until this last year. And, you know, then and, and if we're throwing this last year out, then, you know, I think he's a then as I good. I still see him that way. Yeah, I exactly. just never I didn't see I didn't see a world where going into last year where Juju was going to somehow beat those target totals in the production that he had. I thought we had seen kind of the ceiling type of numbers from Juju that season. That was my concern. And he obviously does a lot. You know, he was doing a lot that first year from the slot, short distance, take it and take it and go. Um, he's a burner though. I mean, he, d he does get loose for big plays. I think 14 is the right spot for him because of the inherent risk and the fact that, you know, what does this team want to do? Yes, there's stupid rumors about, whether he walks or wants too much money, but Deontay Johnson's a pretty good player. They brought in Eric yes. Ebron to compete in the goal line uh, arena. So, you know, Juju's not the only option down there. It's going to be a very interesting season for that offense. Yeah, I, I don't have much to contribute that's that's different other than saying uh, I think Deontay Johnson really helps Juju Smith-Schuster. Like, I think that Johnson will emerge as a as a very, very good wide receiver in the NFL and maybe Juju is just one of those players. Maybe he has to have someone on the other side of the field and can't can't really become that number one that it looked like he was trending to become. So I'm I'm very happy that Deontay is there. I think that helps next year. Well, Juju ran you know 66 percent of the routes from the slot, which was up from the previous two years. So if there is a solid outside receiver, that speaks to your point of of helping Juju. Uh, now, Deont you know, sorry, go ahead. No, I mean that was it. Take you know, take the top off the defense to to open things up underneath right. for Juju. Deontay Johnson had four weeks last year inside the top ten at the wide receiver position. So it'll be very interesting to see his emergence that's the, and what that's, it that's demands. the most disappointing thing for Juju is it wasn't that Deontay was great for fantasy. Juju had one. And right. they both had the same quarterback issues on the year. Yeah. And I know Juju got hurt late, but you know, that's something that's very Juju did not demand the targets from bad quarterbacks that we thought he might. So, because they're bad. Sure. Hey, but Deontay Johnson <laughs> could. Well, when you're stupid, you do dumb things. They, oh, they, were, okay. they were bad, right. and they should have thrown it to Juju more. But Juju missed four games and was injured on, you know, coming back and, and left the game in week 11. So, you know, it's really hard to know. In the beginning of the year, first eight weeks, he had several of his games were, were absolutely fine. A.J. Brown. Number 15 on our list, 12 for me, 15 for Jason, 17 for Mike. Obviously a monster from week 12 on last year. Sixth, first, eighth, fourth, four top 10 finishes in the last six weeks. He is a beast on the field. He has the inherent risk that we brought up in our running back episode about Derrick Henry and the fact that if things go completely right for this team, Sometimes that means Ryan Tannehill and in so facto his wide receiver options are going to have lower production games. They're going to disappear at times. Happened a little bit in the playoffs, low passing volume. But I don't think any of us are going to sit here and debate the talent of A.J. Brown. It's just a matter of what are we going to get? What percentage of those last six weeks is going to be the normal for A.J. Brown? Well, it's, it's certainly not going to be the same percentage that he was getting those last six weeks where every single, uh, you know, game or 80% of them were just behemoth performances. I think what, you know, the reason I, I brought up AJ Brown when I was talking about Juju is because it, it had, it had the same feel in their rookie years where you just look and you say, this guy is extremely talented. He's, he's a special player out there and his time is, is clearly, uh, going to come as a, as a superstar. Um, you know, so A.J. Brown, I think, is going to be the clear number one coming into the year. He was not that this season. You had Corey Davis. Uh, I remember Mike and I constantly lamenting through the season about Tajay Sharp eating into the snap percentages of A.J. Brown. He is gone now. Um, 
And so I think the opportunity is there for A.J. Brown to be a wide receiver one. I think in most drafts, you're going to have to draft him there. I, I, you know, we've got him at 15. I don't think he will – I don't think he'll be there because I, I don't think, think he'll there be will there be for the fifteenth wide receiver. I agree. I think there's going to be an owner in every league that's going to take the shot that this beast of a man in his rookie year breaks out in year two and makes year one not look like a breakout. Um, but it's hard for me to put him there. You know, in his rookie year, he only had fifty two receptions. So uh, you know, you're you're projecting a lot, and you're saying, well, Ryan Tannehill is the savior, and that's the reason why the Titans were that good. But we brought this up in the quarterback show. The efficiency of that Tennessee offense in the red zone was outlandish. You could say, well, that's good. They showed that they're they're good, but it's just Im impossible. You know, one field goal inside the red zone since Ryan Tannehill took over, and everything else scoring wise was a touchdown. Yeah, I, I have him at 17 in this because this is just a confidence thing of the reception total. of if, When it, when A.J. Brown went on his tear, he had five receptions once and then eight receptions for, for these big games. And that's not to say those the other games weren't gigantic. He's just doing it on three and four receptions. And over the course of a year, is that really sustainable or was this – did, did they just take everyone by surprise? Because when the, when they made the change to Ryan Tannehill, how long did it take defenses to catch up? I mean, like sometimes, it, like teams aren't prepared for this new quarterback, and they so they didn't know the tendencies of, of Tannehill on that team. I think defenses will be more prepared next year. Yeah, it'll be you know if if Henry runs the way he's run, play action passing and AJ Brown being able to go sure. from nothing to the number three on the week is going to happen from time to time. Yeah, it will. At 16, Adam Thielen. I'm so kind of meh about Adam Thielen <laughs> that it just, he just feels like he's there in my rankings with, with very little confidence and conviction. I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm not bullish on this passing game. Diggs helps Thielen a lot in my opinion, and losing him is going to be very interesting you know, I believe they're going to continue to run the football, but I don't have Cousins very high. I don't have Thielen very high. I've got him down at 18, and that's more of just respect for what we saw in 2018 when he had 113 receptions, 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns. But that feels like a long time ago when you talk about the lingering injuries, last year's disappointing performances. I'm just kind of – he's there as the one because he's the one on the Vikings offense, and I think you know Cousins is a good quarterback, but – Tell me why I should be more excited about Thielen's potential this year. So I, I'll jump in because I have the highest. I have him at 13. Adam Thielen officially played in 10 games, but when you actually look at snaps and breaking things down, I mean, he, he played the, the first six weeks, then he got hurt right away in week seven. And I know he, he played, uh, he, he forced his way back on the field after returning from the injury and just he he was not Adam Thielen. You could see it, including a goose egg in week sixteen. But up until that point, so in those first five point whatever, five point two games, he had nearly four hundred yards and six touchdowns in that time. Like Adam Thielen was on his way to having a very, very productive season, being a high level wide receiver too. And it's it's completely evaporated because of the injury. And on top of that, trying to get back from injury and being very, very disappointing. So I still have faith that Adam Thielen can return a top 15 wide receiver. I don't need massive output from Kirk Cousins. Like Thielen will, I would project Thielen to be a good fantasy wide receiver and Kirk Cousins to be a, a, a below average fantasy quarterback. I agree that Diggs does help, but I don't think that Adam Thielen can't get it done without Stephon Diggs. Like it, you when when Adam Thielen was having those the, the two years ago when Adam Thielen's first half of the of the year was just absolute bananas, like that's not all just because of Stephon Diggs. That's because Adam Thielen's out there getting open and catching hard passes. Yeah, I I, I love Adam Thielen this year for uh, where he's going to be in the draft. People, you know, he, he got injured 
Um, you know, the the Vikings don't want to throw the ball. They want to run the ball. All these things are going to push him down. He's played, you know, he's been available for 16 games his entire career until this last year. So I don't think this is someone that you can look at and say, oh, he's, you know, is he going to be able to stay on the field? He, he always has until this last year, but he was injured. Um, and so that's going to that's gonna push him down. The reality is he's a great wide receiver. Didn't, I, didn't you guys bring up, receiver. though, like the back half of the year before when he had his super huge breakout, that was kind of the concern coming into last year. Sure. Was and, what level of receiver you're really going to get. Yeah, and I, I guess the, the way that I see it is when you had both of those guys, yeah, Diggs helps Thielen on an efficiency level. But I don't think that, you know, you know taking Diggs out, Thielen is going to get a ton of targets. You're talking about a player who with with Diggs there had 142 targets, 153 targets. I can't imagine if he plays 16 games, him having fewer than 150 targets when he's like the only show in town. So if his efficiency drops, but he gets 150 targets, you're talking about a top wide receiver in fantasy. And this is a pretty good offense. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm all about the value on Adam Thielen this season. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, Thielen ended up, yeah, I guess, I mean, those first five weeks, it was looking a lot, a lot better than we expected. From week nine of the year before, he only had like one top 10 finish. So it had been a while, but yeah, I mean, he should be heavily targeted. If he can stay healthy, it seems mm -hmm. like he's very safe. He was a top 10 wide receiver in 2017, a top 10 wide receiver in 2018, injured last year, and now he's the only show in town. So to me, I think he's going to be a really good value this year. And it's a bit more confidence with Hilt Hilton or Thielen as your one. I, I think Ooh. the upside is juicier with Thielen. Is it, it, it's more exciting, but actually more confidence in in targets. I feel like it's Thielen. Th those guys are really close to me, yeah. despite being five you know linear ranks apart. I'll say, and it's very looking at narrative, trying to get inside of someone's head, but. They didn't have to trade Stephon Diggs. Like he was under contract for a very, very long time. They could have kept him there. They, are, they were contractually obligated to trade him after he tweeted fifty <laughs> anonymous tweets. That was part All of his this contract. Vague booking? If you but, vague book fifty times, you have to be traded. Uh, was that the Antonio Brown? Did he that set that correct. number? Mm -hmm. uh, but the, my point being. The team clearly felt comfortable moving ahead with Adam Thielen and then whoever they're going to add in during the draft as well. Cortland Sutton is 17, Cooper Cup 18, Devontae Parker 19, Robert Woods at 20. So two of those four names we've talked about at length, Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. Two we have not. Devontae Parker, everybody trying to, I believe, just hedge here. Like, you had a great season. <laughs> you had a great season. <laughs> You're not you're willing us. <laughs> you're not willing to anoint and give a permanent place in in the, the the upper echelon of wide receivers. So he sits here at 19. And look, that's the reasonable approach. If you get Devontae Parker from last year, this is the wrong spot for him. If you get There's, the Devontae Parker of the remainder of his right. career or anything close to that, uh, you know, this is too generous. So last year though, 72 for 1202 and nine. Passed the film test, passed the eye test, looked like a great uh, wide receiver. Will we have Fitzpatrick for the whole season? Will you have two no. up for part of the year? Will you have somebody Herbert, else? Yeah, I mean the, the 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 whole hedge here to me is the quarterback. If you if you could tell tell me that Fitzpatrick was going to play sixteen games, I'd probably you, have Devontae Parker yeah. up at at wide receiver twelve or so. He was he was dominant, and some of that there's questions. You know, Preston Williams went down, and yeah. uh, obviously uh, Devontae Parker, Mike Kosicki, they they had a lot more action coming their way once Preston Williams went down. Um, but Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to sling the ball. Uh, you know, he's got an offensive coordinator now that he's been with on two different teams multiple years that has allowed Fitzpatrick to just go nuts. So in a draft, you know, I've got him ranked 17 on a season long viewpoint. But in a draft, I would probably draft him higher than this ranking because I care far more about the beginning of years for players come draft day. Uh, my roster looks so different as the year goes on, and if Devontae Parker comes out with four or five hot fire games, I'm probably going to move him and capitalize on that, assuming that there will be a quarterback change. Um, and, and obviously, It's important to remember it, there's no guarantee that Fitzpatrick getting the first five games does anything for you fantasy-wise. 
We have been down this road it's with true. Ryan Fitzpatrick probably 10 actual times. We, <laughs> we've we been there where Decker and Marshall were drafted in the, the upper echelon of, of, of fantasy drafts and Fitzpatrick submarine their seasons. We've had... He, he's better when he surprises you. He never seems to be the quarterback you need when you expect it. That's the way it seems with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. But He'd there rather were multiple sneak years up. in a row with Decker and, and B. Marsh. Not really, right. no. Was it multiple? No, or it was, was it one year. One? It was one was good it a, year. Yes, because the, the, look, the year was so awesome. Ryan that's Fitz, why you remember it. Fitzpatrick would not be on all these teams if he was the quarterback yeah. that he looked like during parts of last year. Well, he and can, that's why we're saying we assume he's going to be replaced because he's he like always a more, is replaced. He's a more likable Jameis Winston. That's what he is. Yeah. And he has carte blanche. I, I don't want to over... I mean, Cortland Sutton at 17... Uh, getting the respect due there. He's got Drew Locke, uh, 72 for over 1,106 last year on 125 targets. Going into year three, finished at wide receiver 19 last year. 17 feels pretty good. Going yeah, it, beyond – go ahead. It's the it, This is buying into Cortland Sutton because you his production, very, very small sample, of course, but his production was actually down when Drew Locke was the, was the quarterback. And he, I mean, he was still getting eight targets a game. So he was, and he was still seeing a very, very similar target share in the offense. But that's an ugly overall, finish of the season. Yeah, overall the production went way down, and which is unfortunate. But I 100 percent buy into the talent of Cortland Sutton. And now that Drew Locke is pointed at to be the guy, and can spend the off season and the training camp of being the main quarterback, will Drew Locke improve to the point that we get the early season Sutton? I've got Cortland Sutton. I, I've I've loved the talent forever. Um, he was my number one wide receiver when he came out, and he's shown on the NFL that he's he's great. But looking at these rankings, go like, watch if you want to have Cor some fun right now while you're stuck at home. Go watch Cortland Sutton highlights from last year because there are some preposterous catches in there. When you're a great wide receiver with bad quarterback play, your highlights are unbelievable because you're <laughs> you now have the opportunity to make catches that should not be, you know, what's thrown your way. So, yes, I agree, and I love Sutton. But looking at these rankings, you know, I've got cut Feels a little behind high Sutton. Me. There's no way that I'm taking Cortland Sutton over Cooper Cup in a draft, in reality. So that, that's that got to change on on my own rankings. I The only thing I got out of that whole uh, narrative there was that Joe Flacco is elite because that's <laughs> the games that – Don't Sut forget Brandon Williams. Sutton was uh, so valuable. Going beyond the top 20, I'm just going to read them to you as we close out today's show. 21, we've talked about him recently. Stefan Diggs. Mm, that is entirely things. due to Jason. Ridiculous. Who has placed Diggs upon, I believe, some sort of pedestal in his home. Uh, Mike and I both have him more in the, the mid-20s. Jason has him at 14. Keenan Allen at 22. We've all moved him down a peg with the Tyrod Taylor circumstance that he's going to be facing DJ Chark at 23. I would put this, the odds of, you know, when you look at Chark at 23 and Devonte Parker, both of either of those guys could beat the other one out to me this year. Chark sure. showed so much over the first half of the year, but uh, we'll see Calvin Ridley at 24. Calvin Ridley is at 24 on all three of our rankings. He, he, he is really tough. He's one of those players that I'm excited for the, when the actual statistics go in there, so I don't know which player I'm moving up and down. It's just the stats are there. Calvin Ridley could easily end up much higher with with Austin Hooper gone. Yeah, and, and, and Muhammad and, Sanu, and and Muhammad Sanu gone. Like it, it's it's Julio and Calvin Ridley now. Like Hayden Hurst, yes, he'll he'll fill a need, but it's those are the those are the two main guys. And like, who is there a pass catching running back? On that team right now, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Todd, I forgot they picked up Gurley. I was like, <laughs> my bad. Yeah, Todd Gurley. I yeah. thought that was just Some a man. dig at Todd Gurley. I, that's no. what I thought too. I was, no, no, I was, was trying to get you back. Like, don't be stupid. No, yeah. I, was, I completely had had wiped that from my memory. Uh, but but those Ridley and Julio are the main two guys. So Ridley, my, it won't shock me if he moves up a ton in my ranking. Historically speaking, there are four teams every year that have two wide receivers in the top 24 on average. That that means, you know, like 
Both players ended up in the top 24. I can't imagine, uh, you know, Julio and Calvin Ridley are as good a pair as what's out there in the NFL for a team that throws the ball a lot with a, you know, solid Dallas. quarterback. Yeah, it, it, Dallas is there, but I, I do. I love Calvin Ridley here at 24. If, if you can get him around there, I think he's going to be really Arizona. <laughs> sure, yes. Arizona. Up, Homer. <laughs> I only said two deep, though, not three deep. I know, I know. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. I do encourage you to check us out on YouTube. Check out Jason's new video. Check out you the stash. YouTube.com <clears throat> slash the fantasy footballers. And uh, we'll be back with uh, Judge. Are we doing quarterbacks and tight ends on the next episode? Is that right? Oh, yeah. That's an oh, yeah from the Judge, which means um, that's what's happening. He's, that's, so. he's very excited. That was peak excitement for Brooks. Absolutely. So thanks oh, for tuning yeah. in, supporting the show. Appreciate you. Thanks for making me have a mustache. <laughs> See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, a reminder with all the uncertainty in the world, now is the time to protect your home with Simply Safe. There is no technician or salesperson that needs to come to your home. You just order online and set it up yourself. You don't need to pay any outrageous monthly fees or sign a two year contract. And your home will be protected 24-7 with emergency dispatch, all for just 50 cents a day. Head to simplysafe.com slash footballers. Get free shipping and a 60-day money-back guarantee at simplysafe.com slash footballers.